if we have an object sending rays these rays are divergent if these rays meet a surface so rays coming to the surface are known as incident rays and they are divergent so they have a minus sign if this surface has a power to converge these rays rays will be convergent to a point and these convergent rays get a positive sign so divergent rays are always labeled minus The more we go away from the object, the less of amount of divergence. So 10 centimeters, the amount of divergence equal minus 10. 20 centimeters from the object, the amount of divergence is only minus 5. 50 centimeters, the divergence is only minus 2. To understand this, if you want to have at 10 centimeters, if you want to put a lens, a plus lens that will make these rays parallel, then we should put a lens with a focal length equal 10 centimeters. So the object will be at f of that lens, so rays will come out parallel. A plus lens with a focal length 10 centimeters, it's a plus 10 lens. So without the lens, the amount of divergence is minus 10 and we need to put a plus 10 to make it parallel the same is applied here at 5 at 20 centimeters from the object the amount of divergence is minus 5 you need to put a lens of a power plus 5 with a focal length 20 to get the rays parallel Again, at 50 centimeters, you need to put here a plus 2 with a focal length 50 to make the rays to come out parallel. So the amount of divergence at this distance is minus 2. The conversions, the more we get closer to the final point, the more the convergence so 50 centimeters before reaching that point the convergence is plus 2 20 centimeters the convergence is plus 5 10 centimeters the convergence is plus 10 again to understand this you need to put here a lens of a power minus 2 to make these rays parallel to understand this again if you get parallel rays falling on this minus lens and this lens is diverging the rays we need a lens with a focal length here of 50 centimeters because parallel rays are divergent here we extend them to this f location so the focal length should be 50 then the power of this lens should be minus 2 so this means that at this distance the amount of convergence is plus 2 the same is applied here at 20 centimeters you need to put a lens of a focal lens minus 2 to make the rays parallel that's to say the amount of, diver of convergence is plus 5 at 10 centimeters you need to put a lens of a focal length 10 centimeters so the minus lens should be minus 10 this means that at this location the convergence is plus 10 to determine the power of a surface that separates two media so this is the object sending rays and this surface manage to get this rays into conversion to form an image here this distance between the object and the surface is called u and between the image and the surface is called v this is the refractive index of the first media 
and the refractive index of the second media mu1 and mu2 and this is the equation the power of the surface equals the initial versions plus the final versions provided both are of the same refractive index but when they have different refractive index we should multiply the refractive index by u of that media and the refractive index of the second media by V to get rid of the effect or to correct the effect of the difference in the refractive index or the resistance of passage of rays if you have this lens this is a plus 5 lens actually you have here this surface plus 10 and this surface minus 5 and the total power of the lens is plus 5 I want you to keep in mind that this surface has a power of minus 5 regardless the direction of falling of rays if rays coming from behind or rays coming from front the surface has the same power to understand this rays coming from behind are falling on a concave surface so rays will come divergent on the other hand rays coming on that direction are falling on a convex surface so you are expected that rays should come convergent but actually again they come divergent why is that? because in this situation we are moving from refractive index high to a low refractive index if this is the surface and this is the center of curvature if we draw a line tangent here the line from center of curvature to that point this is the radius is 90 degrees to the tangent so all these are radii and at that every point we can draw a tangent so these radii are 90 degrees to the tangent of that point if we have rays coming 90 degrees to the surface it w these rays will continue the same path and all the rays will reach here to the same point center of curvature rays falling perpendicular they continue the same path as here in case of plane surface no deviation at all and again in this curved surface as these all rays are coming 90 degrees they will continue not deviated now we go to the subject of mirrors this is the mirror this is 90 degrees to the surface incident rays will be reflected back the angle here between the normal and the incident rays is known as angle of incidence and between the reflected ray and normal is the angle of reflection and both are equal the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection in this example we have a smooth shiny surface like a mirror where reflection is the same all over we call this a clear reflection this is a dull surface causing diffuse reflection so rays are scattering in different directions we want to consider the laws of this surface laws for mirrors if you have an object sending rays rays will be reflected if an eye receives this rays rays will be sent back and an image will be formed this image is a virtual image you cannot capture it on a screen you cannot capture the image on a screen Uh, 
eye receiving rays send it back to form an image angle of incidence equal angle of reflection again here angle of incidence equal angle of reflection this is an example of a whole mirror a person will send rays rays coming from foot will hit the mirror back to the person's eye rays from the hairs will hit the mirror back to the person's eye the person will send the rays back and an image will be formed behind the distance of the image from the mirror equal to the distance of the object from the mirror the image is erect and is virtual an example of these mirrors is what we use in the periscope it is that apparatus used in submarines to see what's on the surface rays coming from object on the surface reflected from one mirror to another mirror to the observer so this is the idea another example is what we have on the slit lamp light from the slit lamp reflect from one mirror to the patient's eye in case of indirect ophthalmoscope light from the bulb through this mirror to the examined eye in Goldman 3 mirror contact lens we have mirrors of different angulation to see things coming from the eye now we come to convex and concave mirrors you see this dish if we put this dish on a flat surface there will be a point of contact between the dish and the flat surface this is known as the pool of the lens or pool of the surface so this is the mirror concave or convex whatever this is the pool this is the center of curvature of this surface a line joining the center curvature with the pool is known as the optical axis this is the perpendicular rays if we extend the line these rays will appear to come from the center of curvature of that surface and the distance between center of curvature to the pool is known as the radius of that surface let's see how image is formed this is an object sending parallel ray ray will be reflected as if coming from F if we send a perpendicular ray it will be reflected on itself and this perpendicular ray should continue to reach C the ray if an eye here is observing these rays coming back this eye will send the rays back the decussation is here so the image will be formed here a virtual image small image erect image I want you to notice these two triangles Dr this distance between the object and the surface is known as D1 between the image and the surface is known as D2 magnification equals O divided I or D1 divided D2 this equation will be used in keratometers an apparatus that will be discussed later used for determine the curvature of the cornea an example of use of convex lenses here in cars the side mirror and also in streets a convex mirror is used to see a side road parallel rays are reflected and these rays will form an image a virtual image here notice here 
better rays should should come at F better rays come at F if we put a lamp here at F these rays will be reflected on the surface back parallel so here we get a curvature like a mirror and in the F of that curve we'll put the lamp rays coming from F when hitting this curves, curved surface they are reflected back parallel if the object is very far rays when reaching to the mirror they are parallel so parallel rays will be convex will be collected here at F and an image a tiny small image inverted image is formed at F this is the real image you can capture on a surface if the object gets closer to the mirror parallel ray then it should be reflected through F ray passing through center of curvature will reach here perpendicular then it will be reflected on itself the point of crossing of these two rays we have an image here image is smaller than the object it's inverted and it's real image the distance of object to the surface is d1 distance of image to the surface is d2 magnification equal object divided image or d1 divided d2 if the object is located between center of curvature and F so parallel surface should come out through F so ray passing through F should come out parallel ray passing perpendicular should be reflected on itself through center of curvature so any two of the three rays will meet here so an image will be formed here the image is magnified inverted and real image if the object is located closer than F so parallel ray should come through F ray through F should come parallel ray passing perpendicular to the surface will be reflected through C these three rays meet here so we get a virtual image behind the lens and this image is erect virtual image means that you cannot get it on a surface you cannot capture it on a surface so to sum up when the object is at infinity all the rays coming from the object are parallel they will meet at F forming a tiny small object as the object gets closer we get an image formed if the object is at C the image also is at C and of the same size if the object closer than C between C and F the image is here uh, magnified if the object is inside F the image is virtual you cannot capture it on a screen so keep in mind virtual image means that cannot be captured on a screen real image you can capture on a screen thank you for your attention